Hello, I'm Andres Castrillon, President of Consensus International. In this short video, I'm going to show three topics. First, the MRP capabilities of SAP that can be done by warehouse if I want to or for the entire company. Um, two, how to do forecasting in SAP. Uh, we have simple and advanced uh, forecasting tools, standard with SAP Business One. And three, we're going to be covering the functionality that comes out of the box for production, for managing resources, uh, labor, uh, machine, materials, etc. Uh, if you have any questions, please let us know. Thank you. Good. All right, so in the MRP, you have the forecast and then you run the MRP. And the system is going to give you other recommendations that you could uh, change, confirm, update, or whatever. So once you go into forecast, um, you have multiple forecasts here. Anytime you open a screen and you see you know, fields in yellow, it is in fine mode. So in this case, I have this forecast and the system can create the forecast automatically for me uh, or I could uh, copy paste, work it out in Excel and come back and paste it back, okay? I can do that as well. So what I have to do is do copy table, copy this table in Excel. Um, once you open Excel here, so this is Excel, and then you could come back and say, no, this is gonna be actually 25, and this is gonna be 80, whoops, 18. Right, and I'm going to have 50 here. And you could say, there you go. Uh oh, I think I removed the forecast. Operator error. Yeah, I removed it. Okay, anyway. All right, so, um, so this is forecast. Um, that again, I could massage in Excel, bring it back, delete all the lines, you know, whatever it is. Uh, but I can also uh, say, you know what, I want to uh, use this forecast that was created by the system, but I want to increase this by 5%. Okay, simple. But I could also generate the forecast, and there are two ways of doing it. We have the basic forecast from SAP that takes into account the history uh, of sales orders or invoices or whatever it is. Or I could use uh, intelligent forecast, which is forecasting done with a couple of statistical models that are very sophisticated, that are borrowed from the big SAP, the one that costs millions, right? Um, but the basic, um, I could say, uh, let's do these for these items. And I, I, I want to do it for all the warehouses or some warehouses. And I could say, I'm going to use uh, the uh, sales history. And I could use an average of a period of time. Or I could say, use monthly. If I simple average, it's going to give me a straight uh, average for all the months. But if I use history, then I could do that. And I'm going to say, okay, let's use 010115, let's say. That is correct, yes. There you go. There you have it, okay? For the different warehouses. So the system does that. It, and I can update it. Um, if I use the intelligent forecast, it's gonna run a HANA process. It's gonna use one of two different methods of forecasting. 
One is the triple exponential smoothing, and the other is li linear regression with damp trend and seasonal adjust. Um, and the system, when you use it actually, and you define the items that you want to do the forecasting, it uses both of them, and it's going to tell you which one reflects better the behavior of demand of that item. So it's going to suggest for this item, use this one, for this item, use the other one. Um, the linear regression is more for uh, you have seasonality, but you have trends, you have this type of trend, right? And the, the, um, the TSM, which is triple exponential smoothing, what it does is that it gives uh, more weight to the latest periods than to the previous periods. Um, once I have my forecast created and generated, uh, I run the MRP and I can create different scenario or I could have you know, any scenario that I want. So I think this is the one that we want to use um, uh, starting today. And uh, I want to see this by week, quarterly, next. And then it's going to show me what I have in here, what are the items um, that I have. I could even say, you know, add the items that are MRP as well. Now it's underscore, okay. Now I see these items and I can save it. So I could have multiple people running different MRP scenarios for different lines of products or components or whatever it is. Once I have it, then I can run it and the system is gonna show me for all the different items what is the inventory that I have? And if I expand it, then it's gonna tell me historic data. And these buckets here, this in red means that I'm, uh, I'm gonna be in trouble unless I expedite the orders. So it's suggesting a production order, but I have to move pretty quick, okay? Um, it is telling me that this is a supply recommendation and that this is coming from a forecast, not a sales order but the system's gonna show me what's coming from orders, what's coming from forecast, et cetera. And the system is gonna consume forecast with the sales order. So I don't have to keep updating the forecast every month, right? I could see the recommendations that I got from the system, purchase orders, production orders, quantities, dates, whatever. I could save them. And finish. Once I come to the recommendations, um, I have to look at the same scenario, which is I think this one here, click okay. And this is the order that I just created. So I could say, all right, let's uh, create this production order right away um, for these two. And then maybe this purchase order and this purchase order, I could change quantities and whatever it is. Purchase request. Let's see if it works. So I don't have to pick the vendor yet. So purchase request and uh, two production orders. And if I have the service enabled in SAP and I come into purchasing, in this case, a purchase request, I go to the last one. And these are the two items that the system is suggesting that I start quoting. And SAP comes with a web service where you, that you could publish and automatically send um, links to your preferred vendors for these items so they could go to the web page and update pricing and quantities and whatever it is. And then you go in, update it, create a, product, a purchase order for the vendor, and off you go. And that's, uh, that's also standard. So this has to be approved and then allocated to a vendor, enter pricing, expected delivery date, et cetera. So we left it in the, in the order recommendation. So I'm uh, releasing 
you know, a few additional production orders. So if I come to production orders um, and I go to the last one, I'm going to see three production orders that I just uh, created from MRP, which is what it says here. And I update it. And then uh, I could say that this production order is uh, using a resource. I'm inventing something here. Uh, let's say resource six um, using 300 units. And let's say that I need 0.1. So that's going to be 0 0.130. Right, and, and this is going to be warehouse one, that's okay. And it should start on the, uh, let's say the 15th. System can do that automatically. They were not even just, oh, okay. Resource allocation. Uh, that's what I do when I do it, you know, manually. Refer resource allocation not valid. Uh, resources. What am I missing here? Maybe backflash. See, do not forget it. That's okay. Anyway, um, then I have released these production orders. So if I come to the capacity, I could say you know show me from October 10 to November 10 in this case by day, uh, I do a refresh and the system is going to uh, bring all the capacity that I have uh, on the different, uh, you know, war centers. In this case, this is the one that I was using before. And I see allocation, 508 allocated in terms of time for this. Uh, so I have 200 hours allocated. Red means that I I'm over committing capacity. 150, and I see that, and uh, 158 in this case. So the way uh, you run this capacity report is uh, by you know assigning the responsibility by supervisor. These are the three machines or the two machines or whatever that you're working on. The system is going to show you all the capacity. I could actually do collapse, so I don't have to go into every detail, and then I could come in into a specific resources and start, you know, uh, checking into that. Um, so this, it, it, it's a little limited, but for maybe 90% of the company, this is plenty to see where they're gonna have bottlenecks and what they have to do to balance uh, the load of, uh, of work orders. So is, you mean if you want to see that, have that visibility by the work order, you mean, or, or, okay. So for that, um, when you have a production order that you have released, it's going to tell you in which warehouse each step is going to take place and what are the materials are the re and the resources. Um, SAP is working on a, on a better view of what you're mentioning. So you could really see a Gantt. This order went from process to process in the different uh, uh, stations or work centers, right? But this is all we have today. There are a couple of add-ons that are um, very robust that use exact same data and show you that information in a graphical way and you could move and drag and uh, you know, move stuff around. But again, most of the customers start just with this standard version, standard SAP, play with it. Once they get it implemented and set it up, they can see that it may really makes sense to go to something more, you know, advanced. To, you could, um, what you could do is you could enter text, comments and all that stuff. Um, in the production order, um, no, not documents, no. 
yeah, you could enter text. Uh, that's the only thing I can do without limitation. Um, so no documentation linked to it. It's uh, one of the areas where we, it's probably the only one, right? Element where we don't have attachments. Yeah. So this is an order that has been released. Um, the next step with the production order, assuming that you, we have already, you know, covered the capacity and, uh, and, and again, um, SCP is working on, on enhancements on that specific field. Um, I don't know if it's already coming on the release uh, 10. I think part of it's coming in the release that is, uh, that is coming in a month from now. Uh, we're going to check. Let, let me check. It's, it's, very, it's, it's an extensive list. And, and by the way, that's, uh, that's one of the beauties of SAP is that they have a good roadmap. Um, they don't tell you specifically um, what they're going to have in very, you know, in a lot of detail and, until they really have it, right? They give you an idea. We're working on production. We're working on a mobile app for field service, for sales, you know, with certain features. But the specifics will come once it is approved and tested and all that stuff. And SAP does a very good job, you know, hitting the dates and yes videos training and we do uh, webinars as well we do a webinar with what's new in the new version yes so yeah you actually get a, a good uh, PowerPoint what's new in the different areas with links to videos in the SAP Business One Academy so Uh, yeah, we, we um, outside processing, what you do is that you have a resource and then you link it to a production, to the purchase order. Um, you send it out. Uh, that's usually, we set it up as a, a separate uh, warehouse, a third party warehouse where you ship materials and then you receive the items back and then you receive the purchase order for the services provided by the third party. That's, uh, that's easy to set up, yeah in the standard. Um, all right, so once you have production order, uh, is uh, the next thing you have to do is, uh, you could do a manual report of transactions, so you could create a pick list, you could do a transfer from a raw material warehouse into the warehouse. As I don't have anything manual here, it's not gonna let me report anything, but if I wanna do, let me, let me switch this to manual here. And update it and now it's going to show me the possibility of issuing components so i could say issue components by date by range of dates by stage or whatever if, if i don't say anything that's going to tell me okay this is the only material that you're going to be reporting manually so i could say yeah 200 for this production order i'm good um and then i add it I could actually do reporting uh, massively for multiple work orders if I want to, okay? So if I refresh here, 200 were issued already, which is what I just did. The cost of the items being updated, the working process is being updated. And once I report completion, so I have finished producing um, and it's a complete order, and I could say that I completed a little bit more or less or whatever. I produced 202 because I was super efficient. Uh, then the system is going to consume all the components, the timing, you know, everything that is back flushed, based, right there, issued. And, and we're going to see the cost affected. Once I'm finished with it, then I can close it and the system is going to close the working process as well. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video a little longer uh, than the previous ones about uh, forecasting an MRP as well as uh, production. We'll be glad to uh, meet with you and uh, show you how SAP can uh, meet the requirements of your company.